Now, for a number of years now, we've been making jokes about Tony Abbott, about how, <laughs> how awful he was when he was health minister, how nasty he was when he was opposition leader, uh, what a weird and appalling prime minister he was, <laughs> how bitter and dreadful he was as an ex-prime minister, um, how he walks, how he talks, his <laughs> bike riding, his swimming, his ears, his bathers, <laughs> the way he smiles, eats onions, uh, eats ice creams, uh, ice cream sundaes, jam fancies, um, uh, what, whatever this is, not sure. <laughs> The way he um, drinks pretend cups of tea, <laughs> the way he shows human affection, Any, anything really. His uh, 2GB appearances, the time he just stood there and didn't say anything. <laughs> uh, knighting Prince Philip, shirt fronting Putin, white anting Malcolm Turnbull, and, and being tone deaf, and a whole variety of issues like same sex marriage, for example. Sure, we've had some fun, but equally, <laughs> I think when he does something good, we should stop and give him some credit. Earlier this year, as Special Envoy for Indigenous Affairs, Tony Abbott described the housing in the Northern Territory community of Bororula as the worst he'd seen anywhere in remote Australia. The government, defying the knockers and the naysayers and the dismal jimmies, in other words, people like me, listened to Mr Abbott and pledged to rectify the situation by providing the residents with 12 decommissioned RAAF houses, which were decades old and which the Department of Defence had found to be unusable. <laughs> It was good news all round for Tony, whose plan it was, uh, for Scott Morrison, who backed the plan, and for those in Borolula. But particularly for Tony, who appears to be acting more normally these days. And later on in the program, I talk to the man responsible for that improvement in Tony's condition. Well, obviously, I can't go into too much detail because of the doctor-patient relationship, but, uh, yeah, he's doing great. Uh, you've got to understand that Tony has been through significant trauma. Sudden separation from the Prime Ministership means he has, for many years, been suffering from what we call PM's envy. <laughs> A penis envy? That, too. Particularly <laughs> coming from the Liberal Party. Sure. There. And this idea to house the indigenous in dilapidated RAAF buildings? This comes from a deep-seated affection for institutional housing arising from his youth, when he studied boxing at Oxford and lived in a dormitory, right through to when he lived in the police barracks while Killabilly was being renovated. I, 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 I think they was putting in a larger cat flap so Gerard Henderson could get out at night. <laughs> but, but why specifically the abandoned RAAF housing? Why did he choose that? He would have been out there and he sees a problem, and he looks over the hill and he sees these buildings and he thinks, that'll do. <laughs> what do you expect? The guy's an envoy. He's yeah. got no department to tell him this idea is for Carter. <laughs> it's the equivalent of giving him some butcher's paper and some crayons and sitting him in the corner. Let's face it, Scott Morrison's got his hands full enough dealing with his own disgruntled XPM. He don't need Tony as well. Well, thank you. Thank you, <laughs> thank you very much, Sigmund Freud. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> I'm, uh...